All right. Uh, this week's topic is the uh, the Switch Two rumors, and uh, this is something I'm pretty excited about. Um, Switch Two is is probably going to be arriving sometime in March of 2025, around there. Some 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 are saying April, March. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. It's Switch is definitely one of my favorite consoles that's ever launched. Like anyone who's watched my stream, last couple months I played tier, or last couple weeks I played Tears of the Kingdom, and then I played um, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Wonder, and those games just put a smile on my face. Like those games are just really, really, really good, and I'm really looking forward to see what Nintendo does with the second Switch because it, you know, the first one's such a massive success, and yeah, it just it's it's a system that you know you can just go out and buy, and you know there's going to be something for you on that platform, and there's something for everybody on Nintendo Switch. Um, so last week, uh, a user on Fami Boards. Now Fami Boards is a uh, it's an internet forum. I I'm a member up here, but I don't want to go to that uh, go to the site because there's some posts that are uh, private. And I don't want to, you know, sh show those off because I'm a member. But Family Boards uh, used to be a part of Reset Era, and they kind of broke off from Reset Era. I'm not 100% sure what the drama was about. I think it had something to do with the sales of the, of the Switch 2 in Japan. Or, I'm sorry, the Switch, the regular Switch in Japan against PS5. Because apparently Nintendo, Nintendo is, like, completely dominant in the Japanese market right now. Uh, they completely chased Sony out of Japan. And really, just worldwide, the system has sold like 140 million units. It's, it's an incredibly popular console. Anyway, Family Boards broke off from Reset Era, and they formed their own board. Now, as you know, the Famicom was the first Nintendo Entertainment System. So Family Boards, that's where they got their name from, Family Boards. And uh, so a user found some uh, shipment custom data, uh, customs data, and it gave us uh, some insight on what is going on inside the switch 2 and pretty good news is that it's gonna be equipped with 12 gig of ram which is more than what i thought it was going to be in the system i was expecting eight and i think a lot of other people were expecting eight um obviously i said if there was going to be more you know that would have been that would be great uh i think the dev kit has like 16 so 12 makes sense uh usually dev kits have more ram than uh the um, yeah, the dev kits have more RAM than, than the consumer version. Um, the original Switch has 4 gigs of, ma of RAM, so this is like 3 times the increase. Uh, also, the storage is going to be 256 gig of UFS 3.1 storage. 256 gigs, I'll get to that. I'm happy with it being UFS 3.1 storage um, instead of whatever the, the Switch was using. But 256 gig, I'm a little uneasy about, and I'll get to that in, in a bit. But um, yeah, the original Switch had four gigs of RAM and either 32 or 64 gigs of storage. Um, I don't. That this does not mean uh, games can be installed without needing a, an additional micro SD card. Probably on the Switch. Probably if, if, the, if this if the current Switch came with 250, 256 gigs of storage, no, nobody would really need an SD card. I think for Switch Two that might be an issue, but. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, the Switch 2 has two 6 gig LP DDR5 RAM modules for a total of 12 gig, and the internal storage is 256, 256 gigs of storage UFS 3.1. That's good. I think Dexerto has some specs right here. We'll just go to this. Because there are some details in here that I that I uh, want to talk about. Uh, so here's, here's the main specs. It's using a custom NVIDIA ARM SOC, codenamed Drake. Uh, it's based, I think it's based, I think this is the chip it's based on, the two, uh, T239, and the GPU is an NVIDIA Ampere architecture, hope I pronounced that right, if I didn't, let me know, CUDA cores, 1280 CUDA cores, display, an 8-inch LCD display, shame it's not OLED, it's whatever though, RAM, 12 gigs of LPDDR5, and storage, 256 gigs. Pretty good. These are pretty good specs, and I'm I'm kind of happy with this for several reasons. Now we have some more um, uh, details about what the GPU is going to be capable of. Um, it'll be capable of uh, supporting modern rendering techniques like DLSS two super resolution and DLSS uh, three point five ray reconstruction. 
Uh, don't expect frame generation on uh, feature on the console. That's that's fine. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Uh, frame generation is actually a very helpful feature. Um, so DLSS is great. That it's great that they're supporting DLSS. Um, I I occasionally use DLSS. I'm using it in Jedi Survivor right now, which makes the game run okay. Uh, I'm also you know I also used it in the Remnant Two. That was a great game, and it worked pretty well there. Especially when ray tracing is turned on, you know, using DLSS has been extreme, extremely helpful. Um, I guess the Switch 2 is going to have ray tracing. So the nice thing about it is that it's an ARM-based chip, which means, you know, it's, it's going to be much like the original Switch. It's going to be very power efficient. You know, when you put it, plug it into your dock, it's, it's not going to take up that much power compared to an Xbox Series X or a PS5 or even a gaming PC. But still... It's, it's a pretty high performance console. Um, now, Microsoft Court documents have also revealed that the Switch 2 could potentially end up in the same ballpark of power as the PS4 and Xbox One. I think some people, after these specs were revealed, some people were kind of pegging it around PS4 Pro level graphics when it's docked, and probably around PS4 level graphics when it's um, uh, in handheld mode. I think that's amazing. You know, that, that really is... That that really is pretty good. That's that's really good. I think once it came around to the the Xbox One and PS4 generation, I do kind of feel like a lot of people felt like graphics were good enough. You know, I, I do think that there there's always room for improvement, like you know ray tracing and, and path tracing and things like that. Obviously, those technologies we should keep. You know, developer some developers are gonna are gonna keep using, but I think for Switch Two, you know, this is. This is good, and I think a lot of people are going to be happy with it. Yeah, PS4 graphics and handheld sounds pretty dang good. Yeah, I think so as well. And hey, Chance, how you doing? And you're right, after a point, they stop mattering. Yeah, after a point, it just stops mattering as much. And I just feel like, you know, for me, personally, I I think PS4-level graphics were, were great. I remember when the system was first unveiled, the, the PS4 and Sony was showing off the Killzone demo. Um, you know, and I was looking at it, I'm like, am I Pete? My PC can, oh, my headset went off. My, I was like, my PC can do this. I wasn't like blown away or anything, but I was, I was impressed. And I just think that, you know, in, in this day and age, you, you know, it, graphics are good enough, you know? Yes, it's great that we have games like Cyberpunk that push path tracing and ray tracing to the max. And I'm glad that we do that. And I'm glad that there are developers out there that do that. But not every developer wants to do that. You know, some developers, they just want to focus on making a really good game. And sometimes it's not worth putting in all that effort into the graphics because it, it's more money. Take Spider-Man 2, for example. Spider-Man 1 was an amazing game. Uh, I loved it. It was one of my favorite PS4 games. That's not God of War. And... Um, Spider-Man 2 released, and I felt like it played a, a lot, you know, it, it played very similar to Spider-Man 1. And in the inso in the leaked Insomniac documents, it was said that uh, the, the Spider-Man 2 cost 65 million, or six, it's like somewhere between 60 to 70 million dollars more to make than the first Spider-Man. And they asked the question, did gamers really notice that jump? You know, and like, did they notice that the game was... And I had an extra 60 million on top of it. Like, did they notice that quality? I'm going to say I didn't. I thought it was a very high quality game, but so was the first Spider-Man game. I didn't notice that. So, exactly. A lot of extra effort that just doesn't add much for a lot. Yeah, it doesn't. And, like, I just feel like... You're, you're right, Chance, you're right. It, it's like, I didn't feel like... You know, I, I feel like sometimes developers are just going bigger and bigger. And I really don't think they have to anymore. And I guess what I'm going to get around to in saying is that I actually think Switch 2, and there's been a lot of talk and chatter about this online, a lot of talk about it, but I think Switch 2 is going to get more third-party support than Switch 1. And Switch 1 did amazing, did, well, didn't do amazing, but it did pretty good in, third, in terms of third-party support. It's got, you know, Fortnite and Apex Legends. I think it might even have Overwatch on there. I don't think Overwatch 2, but I'm pretty, I would bet Overwatch 2 is coming to Switch 2. Um... You know, it, it got tons of, tons of great indie games. I mean, the indie scene on Nintendo Switch is just incredible. It's incredible. And, you know, I, I do think some developers are going to make games that are going to run on Switch 2. And it makes sense. 
Switch 1 sold 140 million consoles. That's incredible. Now, I don't know if Switch 2 is going to sell that much. I really don't know if that's going to happen. But I do think it's Switch 2. If Nintendo gets it out of the gate right, I think this system is going to have great third-party support. I think third parties are going to want to support it because they want another platform to sell their games on. With Xbox kind of bowing out of the market or making their hardware more for the fan rather than for the mass market like PlayStation, I think developers are going to turn to Nintendo console and say, you know what? We can support it. I couldn't believe when Dark Souls came to Switch. I love to see the library get more and more stuff. Yeah, it's amazing, right? It's it's great seeing Nintendo get those games. I think Switch 2, I think it's highly possible Switch 2 can get Elden Ring. I think that'd be incredible if Switch 2 got Elden Ring. Imagine playing Elden Ring on the go. Uh, I think Persona 3 Reload is rumored to come, is rumored to, come to Switch 2. Yeah, Sega is going to support Switch 2. Square Enix is going to support um, Switch as well seems possible yeah oh yeah you did play elden ring on on ps4 yeah you told me that yeah yeah it's very possible i think with these specs yeah i think it's i think it's i think it's highly possible that it'll come to uh switch to or uh switch to i think it'll run run just fine that's that's if from wants to port it sometimes from just likes to move on to the next game they might hire another uh, another studio to port it over though which would be a smart idea you know um i think they should personally i think that would sell gangbusters man i'm talking that would sell that would sell mass amount of copies like that would be incredible um yeah i i think developers are going to look for a third platform you know other than pc and Play playstation to bring their games to yes there'll be some games on the the smaller xbox market share but i think developers are going to want to support this system please from please give me ds2 remaster i am begging <laughs> dude Dude, if you've been to the forums I've been to online, they're gonna say no. They're gonna say, uh, they're gonna say no, we want, uh, a Bloodborne 60 FPS remake. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's, I think Bloodborne, I think a lot of people are gonna say no, give me Bloodborne first. <laughs> um... And hey, I, I don't blame them. Bloodborne at 60 FPS could be pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it just makes sense to go multi-platform. Now, the only game I think... Well, there's a few developers out there that won't really make games for Switch 2. I think CD Projekt Red might be one of them. Might. I mean, The Witcher 3 did come to Switch, so I'm 50-50 with them on it. But one developer I can tell you probably won't make a Switch 2 game is Rockstar. Grand Theft Auto 6 doesn't need Switch 2 on launch. The game's going to sell probably 20 million in the first week. That game is going to be a juggernaut of a game. When the trailer first got revealed for that, that that, that trailer had hundreds of millions of views. They're not going to put the game on on Switch uh, or on Switch 2. Uh, especially because it might be, you know, th that game is probably very specifically built for PS5 and Xbox Series tech, uh, you know, tech. It's not even coming to PC on launch, which is unfortunate. I am aware of the DS2 slander. They haven't accepted the truth that DS2... <laughs> Uh, yeah, DS2. I, I've heard some people really do enjoy DS2. Dark Souls. I remember Demon Souls. A lot of people were very hyped up for Demon Souls. Like, I remember when that game first came out in Japan, people were like... The, 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 most of the internet was... I think I think it was Demon Souls. I think the, most of the internet was a little shaky about it. But then the game released in Japan first, and people were like, no, 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 this is actually like a really special game. Like, you gotta try this. People loved it. And honestly, I think From Software really started their own genre with that. Like, they really kicked off the dark, the Soulsborne genre. There are Soulsborne games coming out that I want to try, um, which I, I'll talk about probably about in a future video. But yeah, I I think um, I think it's highly, highly possible that Switch 2 is um, going to get some From games. Um... Also, in terms of 12 gigs of RAM, now games, just one, one note on this, the 12 gigs of RAM, games aren't going to use the full 12 gigs of RAM. Nintendo's going to siphon off some of this RAM for the OS. I'm thinking maybe one to two gigs of RAM from the 12 gigs. So you're probably, so games will probably use between 11 or 10 to 11 gigs of video memory. They're probably not going to be using the full 12 gigs, which is fine. You know, even the Switch One right now doesn't use the full four gigs of RAM, so no, I, I think that's fine. I, even even if it was like ten gigs, that's still really good today. Like, that's more than my GPU has. Okay, I have a thirty seventy, and my GPU only has like eight gigs of RAM. So no. now, my only complaint—I only have two complaints about the specs. 
One is the storage. It has 256 gigs of storage. Now, Call of Duty, which Microsoft said they will put Call of Duty on Switch 2. You guys know this. Call of Duty updates are usually, like, massive. And you're going to run out of that 250, 256 gigs of storage pretty fast if you have Call of Duty on there and you have other games on there. Because the game sizes, you know, the more powerful the system, you know, the game sizes are possibly going to be bigger. So... You know, if you're going to buy a lot of third-party games, this 256 gigs is going to disappear quick. So it makes me wonder what kind of SD cards they're going to use. Because they can't use regular SD cards because that's slower. That's that's using slower storage speed than what's in the Switch 2. So I think there is a new SD card tech coming from Samsung, which will which will which the Switch 2 will probably use, um, which will be fast enough for Switch 2. Also, UF, UFC... Um, UF3, UFC 3... I think it's UFC 3.0. What is it? Let's see. 3.1 storage. This is good. This is good. I think the only issue is that it's 30% slower than an NVMe SSD. I don't think it's that big of a deal. We're still going to get really quick load times anyway. Probably like one, gig one gigabit a second. Somewhere around there, I think. But this is pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with this as well. I think it's 50. I think some people are a little disappointed that it's not using NVMe. Nintendo doesn't. Nintendo was never going to use NVMe storage, not like the PS5. Yeah, this 256 gigs of of of, of uh, storage, that can disappear really quickly, especially if people decide to make this their main console. Which brings me around to my next point, and I think this system, since I, since I I do th feel like this system is going to get more third party support. I feel like the Nintendo Switch 2 and PS5 are going to compete much more closely than Nintendo and Sony has since the GameCube and PS2 days. And I think that's going to be that's going to be really good for com competition. You know, PlayStation's not really doesn't really have competition with Xbox right now. I think it was just revealed that like Sony sold like 5 million units or 4 or 5 million units and Xbox only sold, sold less than a million in a, in a quarter. Let's face it, Sony can use a little bit more competition in the console space. Um, I, so I'm basically walking back what I said last week. I said last week that I think Sony's going to have you know a good monopoly on the AAA market. I don't think that's going to happen. I think some developers are going to step up and put their games on Switch too because they need game developers are looking for growth. The bigger the games, the more they want to sell those games on different platforms. Look at Capcom and Sega. Capcom, it was revealed last week or the week before that they make more money on PC than they do on console. And that is um, that is awesome. And I can definitely see Capcom supporting the Switch too. Oh, also, I want to say, yeah, I want to say that these are not um, official by any, by any stretch. These are these are rumored, but I think there's we've got some reliable leakers saying that this is probably what's going to be included in the Switch too. So none of this is official. Uh, but this this was caught by somebody who looked at like, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, how do you, how do you, how did he find it? Um, uh, using LIC posting that the Switch 2 has, uh, yeah, so it, it's a big improvement. Nintendo really does have a big improvement over the uh, over the Switch 2. Oh, sh sh oh, shipment and customs data uncovered by Fami boards. Okay, so this is almost as, as, as official as it's going to get. Now, some people might out there say, I thought it had 16 gigs of RAM. Again, the development kit has 16 gigs of RAM, so. S so anyway, I, I do think Nintendo Switch is going to give PlayStation some extra some competition in the console market i think that's highly possible if they get more third-party support because let's face it third parties are mostly the reason why you buy these consoles nintendo people buy nintendo consoles mostly for their first party games and it feels like third party is like an afterthought on nintendo consoles but if nintendo switch 2 has good third party support along with nintendo's amazing first party support that's gonna be a juggernaut and to be fair, there's really not much PlayStation can do about it at this point in the console market because it's very hard for them. It's going to be very hard for them to sign exclusivity deals because games are so expensive these days. And some developers might not just want to do it because they want to foster an audience on another platform, which is going to make them more money. So I think I, I, we're a long ways away from the PS2 days where Sony dominated. They are being they, they are doing very well today, honestly, and that's, that's good. But I think Switch 2 could be good competition if it has good third-party support could it run destiny oh it'll definitely run destiny destiny ran on ps4 pro yeah version yeah honestly so yeah i hope the persona games yeah angela persona 3 reload has been i think was rumored to come to switch 2 in fact it wouldn't surprise me if persona 6 is going to come to switch 2 honestly i think i think those games are going to very easily come to switch 2 
Um, Sega wants to be a multi-platform developer. It, there's there's nothing but positive things coming from bringing those games to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I, I can't tell, I can't express that enough. It's nothing but good things because you're growing your audience on another platform. You're making more money. Yes, the Persona is most likely going to come to Switch too. I think Sonic games are going to come to Switch too. Uh, well, yeah, obviously Sonic. You know, man, I I, I could imagine some Resident Evil remake games will come to Switch too. Uh, maybe even Resident Evil 7, possibly Resident Evil 8. I don't know if Switch is going to get a mass amount of ports on it day one. I, that's probably not likely, but I do think some older titles are going to get put on Switch too. So developers can earn that extra money. I mean, imagine playing like, imagine playing, you know, like Devil May Cry 5 on your Switch 2 or Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil 4 Remake. That's just, you're just leaving money on the table at that point. So... You know, we'll we'll see, we'll see. I, I do think I, I do think the system's gonna be very successful. Uh, Nintendo has is just the leader in how good their first party is. They they know exactly what they're doing. Also, I think another rumor is that the uh, Joy Cons on the side, I think it's rumored that they might be magnetic. However, instead of the typical rail system found on current models of the Nintendo Switch, the Switch Two Joy Cons will connect with an electromagnet system. That sounds pretty cool. That's definitely an upgrade over uh, what uh, what we have right now. Um, press on the controller, one behind each Joy-Con, another below the home button. So, will be larger and more ergonomic. That's good. And their new SL and SR buttons will now be metal buttons. Oh, that's pretty good. While the new electromagnetic connection system could mean existing Joy-Cons would be obsolete, Explain, uh, Motopad explains that the Bluetooth chip of the Switch 2 will support any existing Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers. So, yeah, your previous accessories will work on the Switch 2 as well. Oh, this is important. Hall Effect Sticks. Hall Effect Sticks is like, you know when your sticks, uh, the joysticks get like stick drift and they, you know, they lose their sensitivity. Sometimes you'll see like, a, you know, your, your camera will move around even though you're not moving the, the joystick. That's um, what's called stick drift. And Hall Effect Sticks... Uh, like the one on, I have on my uh, 8-bit do controller has Hall Effect sticks. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they they do bring that to the Switch too. Uh, Joy-Con drift was a has been a glaring problem. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, with Hall Effect sticks, stick drift could be a thing of the past. It, it looks like they might be using it. So now the other uh, spec is that it's using an LCD screen, not an OLED. Honestly, OLED's just gonna up the price of the console. I understand why they're not using OLED instead they're using LCD. I get that. You know, not it's it's not a big deal to me. I mostly play this thing docked anyway, but an 8-inch LCD screen pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it looks like they they have a patent to fix the Joy-Con drift. And I I sincerely hope they do. That's why I don't really play all my Joy-Cons because it, the stick drift. Leaks and rumors. Yeah, sadly lack of OLED might be seen as a step backward for the Switch 2, but this could be due to cost-cutting measures to hit a consumer-friendly price. I understand that. That's not a big deal. For some people, it might be a, a big a big deal, but I think $400... Yeah, it's, it's predicted to be hit a $400 price point. Yeah, that's probably fair. I think that... Um, I do think that is pretty fair. You know, I, I, I there is going to be an OLED Switch 2, but probably not for a few years, and it's fine. I understand why. With hardware expected to be a significant jump and with more features also suspected to arrive thanks to the onboard NVIDIA chip, the Switch 2 might be a little more costly than its predecessor. Yeah, that's that's true as well. Actually, there is one feature I wanted to look at and... Oh, okay. On a 3050 base laptop, we managed to squeeze out considerable perform performance by using DLSS 2 and, a har and hardware that supports DLSS 3 sees massive gains. So... DLSS 2 being in the system is going to help it see massive gains. So that tech is going to be in Switch 2. That's amazing. It could be capable of doing 4K gaming. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I, I, I think this is going to be a very successful console for Nintendo. I think with the, just, with the spec bump alone, people are, people are going to love it. Now, I do want to see Tears of the Kingdom have like a system update. or um, If you have Tears of the Kingdom, hopefully they'll update it. Uh, it might be a paid update, but... You'll update it, and hopefully the game will run at a better frame rate, maybe have better graphics, better you know, visuals. I also hope that there's no load times. Sometimes when you would use the ascendability, you would have to like 
you know, go through that weird loading screen where it just kind of goes, you know, dark, shows a dark background and Link's swimming through the, the floor. I remember one time I was in a creek in Breath of, uh, I'm sorry, in Tears of the Kingdom, and I did ascend into this bridge, which really wasn't that high up. And there was a brief loading time. I was like, oh my god, there's lag there. The Switch 2 could definitely use, uh, well, Tears of the Kingdom could definitely use more RAM. I think, I think, Chance, I think you even said that. Yeah, you know, at one point, yes, uh, Tears of the Kingdom could 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 have used more RAM. I feel like loading screens help things load. Well, yeah, they do, but a lot of developers use um some sometimes storage can be fast enough that developers can just stream it from the heart from the from the storage. And so it'll just pull in the assets that you need. Like the closer you get to a building from the far off distance, it'll start pulling in the assets closer to that building. Yeah, tears had yeah, there were the yeah, and playing that for like 10 streams straight yeah, it felt like the Switch 2 could, or uh, Switch was struggling to run it. Still, it ran pretty good. It didn't run bad or anything, but I did feel that as well. I was like, man, this could this could really use some some extra power. Maybe like an extra two gigs of RAM would really help Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> and maybe like, actually, yeah. And I think I think Nintendo Switch actually has like a quad core CPU, and I think Nintendo or maybe. Nintendo Switch, I think Nintendo Switch has uh, a couple CPU cores disabled, so hopefully Nintendo doesn't do that this time around. I hope they keep it to however many cores the chip has in it. The Switch is surprising. It is. It is. And you know, honestly, Angela, me and Chance were talking about this. When I was playing Mario Odyssey on stream, I thought that game still looked good. Like, I thought Mario Odyssey was, like, one of those games out there that just never aged in terms of how it looks. I, I think Nintendo really, I think Nintendo, you know, their art style and how they use their, you know, their visuals. I, sometimes I don't feel like their art style age. I think Super Mario Wonder looks beautiful. It's colorful. It's vibrant. Animations are great. It's not just about ray tracing and fancy lighting or anything like that. Sometimes it just, sometimes the art style just, if it hits right, it's perfect. Now, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo's going to deal with some competition from NVIDIA, MediaTek, and PC and gaming handheld business. So, NVIDIA, they're making the chip for Switch 2, but apparently they're not happy with how long it's taking Nintendo to release the Switch 2. And I think Nintendo's doing that because they want better first-party support for the Switch, which I understand completely. I do. Nintendo wants to get it right. Yeah, it looks like, you know, NVIDIA MediaTek will have an ARM-based AI processor for PCs. This chip is said to cost around three hundred dollars. So, give give them what we already have on the market. It is relatively expensive. It is expensive. The collaboration is said to involve TSMC, which would manufacture the chip using three nanometer node, and that would happen in the first half of twenty twenty five. It is said. While the actual product is not expected until twenty twenty five, MediaTek and Nvidia would reveal their plans already next month at Computex. But the company is relatively slow to adopt and release their product to the market with. Ampere, um, Ampere base SOC expected to hit, hit the, to hit the market as Nintendo Switch 2 next year. Companies who can launch, yeah. So it looks like Nvidia is gearing up to do this on Windows handhelds as well. Uh, they're going to be making competing devices using the same tech that's in Nintendo Switch 2. So there's going to be some competition. There's going to be some competition for Nintendo Switch because ARM processors are very good and they're very power efficient. And it's going to be very interesting to see what NVIDIA is going to be able to pull off with um, uh, with their new you know, chips that are going to go on Windows PCs. I think even it's I think there was a rumor today that PlayStation is rumored to be releasing another PlayStation Portable, uh, but this time it's going to run PS4 games. That would actually be pretty amazing as well. So yeah, and Microsoft is asking around about mobile game consoles or hybrid game consoles like the Switch 2. I think Nintendo is going to be having a lot of fierce competition in the next couple years because you know the, the you know chi your arm chips are going to start coming to Windows or they're going to start arriving on Windows PCs in a bigger way and uh that's going to provide competition for Nintendo because arm chips are very good for mobile products. If you're using a smartphone, chances are your phone has an ARM, well, no, it's your, your phone does have an ARM CPU in it because ARM is the only chip <laughs> that's in smartphones these days. Um, so it's gonna be very interesting. The next five years in the video game industry is gonna be very interesting. It doesn't matter if you're on PC, console, mobile, it's gonna get very interesting in five years. And I am very excited to see where this industry is gonna go.
with uh, mobile, you know, PC gaming handhelds. And even the Steam Deck. Steam Deck has been a massive success for Valve, and I actually want a Steam Deck. Um, you know, people talk about that thing. It's like it's it's amazing. I, I definitely um, I definitely think that's a great uh, system to own as well. So I'm pretty like I said I'm pretty excited about Nintendo Switch too. I I really do want to see what this system is going to be capable of. I want to see what it looks like. I want to see what 3D Mario game is going to come to Switch to. I want to see all this stuff, and I'm just super excited to see what Nintendo has up their up their sleeves. So, oh, this is a big rumor. This is another rumor. Uh, they were showing there. There was a rumor that they were showing off titles at GamesCon, and they were allegedly showing off the Unreal Engine 5 Matrix Awakens demo, which looked amazing, in addition to a souped-up version of Bre Breath of the Wild. So that's a that's pretty amazing. If it can run the Unreal Five or yeah, Un Unreal Engine Five Matrix Awakens demo, it's a pretty good piece of tech. But again, this is just rumor. I would actually take this with a grain of salt more than the specs up here. I'm sorry, the specs down here. The, this is mostly confirmed by like you know people who understand the industry. Well, not confirmed, but heavily heavily speculated. Yeah, I, I think Switch Two is looking to be a, a juggernaut of a system in terms of its specs, first party support. And even third-party support. I think it's, I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing, and I'm very excited to see Nintendo Switch too. So that's all I wanted to talk about.